Alright, Blood Bowl fans, let's do this last game then. There's a big difference here, this one's gonna be epic, and I'm gonna die. But I'm already dead, so that's fine. So, <clears throat> Blood Bowl Armors have their last round robin match against the reigning champions. And we have a gutter runner out, not our best gutter runner. Uh, we have a ghoul out, sorry, he's called gutter runner. Not our best ghoul, but that's fine. Our agility ghoul comes back, and our white comes back. He's gonna make a big difference in this game, I hope. I've got 1,000, I've got 12,000 to spend in petty cash, which I may well use. And I will also have about 400 worth of inducements. 410 worth of inducements, this is going to be great. So what am I up against here? I've got the super awesome Dutch folks, of course, and starting with the Yeti. We've got Mighty Blow Guard, and interesting choice, actually. It makes sense in tinfoil. Uh, thick Skull, I had to think, but what's that called? what that's called? How, how uncommonly it's used. And the Niggle. And Alexander Lassie Witt with block, tackle, and minus AV. And Harry Carey with diving, tackle, block, and minus movement. The one berserker is still a rookie. And we have the thrower with strength, sure hands, agility. And the runner with catch and with dodge. God, these pieces need to die. And then we've got all the linemen. These weird and rocking linemen. So we've got Mighty Blow, Agility. That's a double and an 11. We've got Strip Ball and Tackle. And we've got Guard, which is another double. And we've got Tackle again. So Ghouls are going to be in trouble this match. I think I have a one-man bench, though. And he has a two-man bench. So he has the slight advantage there. I've played this team twice already in this league format, and Fallen Glory I've played I don't know how many times, I lost track a long time ago. But what does this game mean exactly? Well, the Rats and the Nurgle haven't yet fought off against each other, so we've got the Rats at the top very strongly, 1-1, one, one, and what rotten luck at the top with the exact same score, so whoever wins this is going to be the champion. If, if, if Fallen Glory manages to win, he's still in contention to qualify, and if I manage to stop him from winning, that means that he stays in number three, certainly. And I get a consolation prize of a draw or a win. If I get a win, it's not going to affect anything. I'm going to end third, so I'm going to do my best to get a win here. Though I don't like my chances too much, if I'm honest. I'm going to have to have a look at the rules, actually, to see what I can induce and what I can't induce, because I have so much money for inducements here. Anyway, here comes the game. Alright, let's do this. So, Blood Bowl fans, we have our last tinfoil match against my good friend Fallen Glory and my fellow admin. Well, he's an admin, I'm a moderator. He's actually my boss, but... Yeah, fellow admin. We're going to be facing his Norse in the final little playoff. As I said in the introduction, I think he needs to win in order to have even a chance of advancing. So he needs to beat me here, and I'm going to try and make that absolutely impossible. That's my job for this round. Here we go, and we're at his stadium, which means that if we get pushed off the pitch, bad news for us. The Norse are singing Nordmead. If you don't know that song, I would highly recommend you go find it right now. Pause this video and go find Nordmead if you don't know the song. Even if you do know the song, go find it. And our boys looking good, looking good. We're singing Dance of Death. I had 400,000 inducement money here, so I spent it on Setek, a wizard, a bribe, and a babe. Uh, I also included some of my own money. I spent 52,000 cash, I think, on the inducements in the end. Coin flip. Coin flip goes the way of the Norse. And he chose to receive, I believe. Yes, he did. Let's just switch view, because we don't want to be looking up at the backside of Norse. As sexy as the men are. I have a lot of work to do today, so I'm going to try and get as many videos as I can out, but uh, I don't think I'll get more than two, to be honest, because I have a lot to do otherwise. So I'll see what I can do, but I'm going to fall behind on videos a bit now. At least until Thursday. 
Alright, Full and Glory is setting up in a way that can cause as much damage as possible to my boys, though I have put five pieces on there for him to struggle against, including two high strength pieces, because Setek has strength four, and also obviously the money. Money? The money? This is the money. The mummy has strength five. We were trying to figure out what happened to the Yeti, how he got a niggle, and I'm pretty sure it was this team that caused the niggle, because this is the third time these two teams have collided. Twice last season. Okay, pickoff is good from this scary, scary thrower. Uh, this guy really needs to die. I'm going to do my best to make it so. And he sets up a cage immediately. Well, half cage and starts taking some blocks. And wild animal from the Eti, that's good news for me. That gives me a chance to actually counterattack. So does White saying standing up. I'm so glad he has block. But it looks like Ulfwaran is going to do enough. But he forgot, uh, the whole game I think, he forgot that the, uh, that the White has Fend. And I gave it Fend specifically for this team, I remember now. I remember looking at Fend and thinking, why the heck did I give it back? But I gave it it because I had to play this game twice. And I didn't want the White to be served. And now I'm glad I have it again, so it's not such a stupid choice after all. And you managed to put Sedic down as well. Right, my return attack. Might not do too much attacking here, mostly want to do some screening to make sure that nothing is coming through too quickly on the opposition side. Though I will take a block against some small squishy pieces, and we'll stay standing on the Yeti. We start off with a stun. That's a good start to the blocking. And a push from Sedic, which isn't so good. Though we can potentially get a punch on this Ulf. We'll see. And probably won't bother though. Is this fracture? No, it's stiff. I probably won't bother them. Exhibit will take a block on Mr. Norse instead. And it's a two down. That's no good. Turnover. Full and Glory actually has a bench of two, which is quite important, and I have a bench of two as well because I've taken setting. Alright, ball is moving forward, making it difficult for me to slow him down actually. Though he has put me directly onto a block skeleton piece, which is very nice of him. And he tries to get rid of Specimen because he hates Specimen from the history that we've had together, but uh, Specimen stays on the pitch this time. And let's hope he has a better game than last time, where he was just standing around and doing nothing, basically. So far he's been in the way, so I'm happy with him so far. And he gets a good punch on Cadaver, Cadaver goes down, and look at all these strength pieces that I have to get through. This is going to be very, very difficult. I'm going to have to roll a lot of dice, and that's never a good thing in Tinfoil. Now he's pushing the mummy out, which is nice of him. And that's a frenzy trap. It leads to a two down and my mummy getting KO'd. Ouch. The two down was pretty good for both of us though. We both have mighty blow and he has low armor value with niggle and I have, of course, uh, I'm facing claw, which is going to be helpful for him. So the two down was actually good for two of us. There was a good chance that both big guys were going out. Gonna do my best to get onto the ball, maybe knock out one piece if I'm lucky, but a push isn't helpful. Give me one more piece to get into the fight by knocking off that Norse. Just making it as hard as possible for him to get out, he's gonna have to roll dice in order to move. So, 
I'm going to mostly make him do the dice rolls here, but I'm going to take the one die on the runner. And that is good. I'm going to get stunned. As the runner is mostly the receiver, that's very good. Did you take a half die on the thrower? Fracture gets up, takes a punch, goes back down, goes back to sleep. Good night, Fracture. Alright, let's see what Lenny could do then. Ah, I don't usually call people by their name. Sorry, Fallen. It's just bad habit. As we usually do call each other by their name. But I try not to do that on this channel. He does take a block against the white, which is maybe unnecessary, but it's a way of making it so we can get more players into space, I guess. And he takes a block against Specimen because he hates Specimen. Every chance he gets, every chance he gets, he will block Specimen. And he's the ball player where he is. Interesting, though he has got his, all of his strength pieces in one space. This makes it very difficult for me to fight him. So it's well, well, well positioned here. Though I will take the one die, I'm not afraid of them. I will take half dice, I'm not afraid of them either. I bring a specimen in to try and do some help, and he gets a skull. Yeah. This specimen is not as good as the last specimen, that's for certain. Gets two down, and he has block. Do they both have block? Yes, they do. One has diving tackle as well, and I need to try and remember if one has diving tackle because it's going to be a problem when I'm on attack. The runner is free to come out, and that gives Fallen a chance to pass the ball if he wants to. And he does just that, but straight through the middle, and Setek intercepts. Well done, Sedek. You have proved yourself worth the money. That's actually huge, because that means that uh, I have a lot of pieces in support here. And Sedek is the hardest piece to put down here. I do have Dauntless on this zombie, and I use it to great effect against the Ulf. Great effect indeed. The Ulf goes bye-bye. Good night, Ulf. See you next time. take this half die again, and the push is good enough, it means the setter can get out. And maybe, maybe pass into space. Luckily that piece has block, and I'm running out of time this turn, I remember, so I go for a very, very quick click. Not the best choice I could have made, but it will do. And we struggle to keep the ball, and the ball goes back to where it started. Messy, messy, messy. And that's good for Norse. Better, better for most than for me, definitely. Because he can get some pieces out of the way here. Although I do have my wizard, and I'm not afraid to use it in the first half. Mostly I want to stop him from scoring here, so I'm going to use everything at my, at my disposal to do so. Really need to give these ghouls block. I have much as clear watching these games back. Really, really need some block. Or at least some wrestle. Mm, fracture is stunned again. And the thrower does his thing, pushing Gadaver off, and there he gets to pick up the ball. And he puts five piece together and hands off. That is a perfect place to use a fireball. That is coming next. As is tinfoil. I'm not afraid of using a fireball. It's just too tempting to say no to. The rot is KO'd. And we have a push from the Yeti on the skeleton. The Yeti's gonna get well out of the way. Oh, and maybe do some damage to the skeleton. Nope, he'll be... No, he is injured. Oh no. How bad is it? Badly hurt. And he regens anyway. Taking a one die is the last move against Warrior Priest, uh, freeing him up, which is nice. Means I can maybe run him into space. 
And there is the fireball. Uh, it was a good one. It was a very good one. It was a fantastic one. Star player. One of the star players, at least. Oh, lose the points in agility. That's painful. Unlucky, Fallen. Unlucky. And the ball doesn't land in the Berserker's hand, which is good, because that would have been a little bit of a downfall to the fireball. And I do move Warrior Priest into space. I'm not going to get the ball to him this turn, but I'm hoping I'll get it to him next turn. And I take the one dying against the Berserker, trying to put him down. Specimen finally does something after three games. Though it wasn't too impressive. And we've got one more piece that's going to lock up the Yeti, because he's the Dauntless Zombie. And it's his job to punch the big guy. Usually that's Rock's job. And Rock actually did his job in the first match, even though he's not that piece. But I have a piece specifically for it. Berserker pushes Skeleton in a strange direction. But it works out well, and especially with the block, the specimen is stuck on the ground. And he has a chance to pick up the ball. Zedek's going to take a block first, though. And so is the Yeti. The Yeti's going to do what he does as well. And the push is good. And the second push is good. Darkus is going to stay up. The last of the Norse are just cleaning up the field, making sure there's space to get the ball out. At least that's the hope. And he's going to go for the pickup here. I really hope he goes off. No, he's not going to go for the pickup. Yes, he goes for a dodge pickup. That was right, because this is an agility piece. 83, 83. But he fails the dodge, which is quite unfortunate. It's a pretty safe dodge. Though he did want to blitz out. I remember him saying that now, when I think about it. Though the dodge was safe enough, to be honest. Hoping to put down this Ulf, but he has block, so we'll take the Juggernaut instead. And the ghoul stands up. Skeleton comes back into the fight. And takes a foul on that key piece, because I want him gone. And there goes the bribe. Probably not going to be fouled on much more, if at all. And I do take the Dauntless Punch against the Yeti. It's good enough, but it doesn't do any damage. And White comes back into the fight, because there's no point in standing off in the distance anymore. I could have left him out there, to be fair, he was my one chance to score. But um, I've given up the score, I just want to stop Leonard here. That's the only goal, really. And attack frees up the ball. All he needs to do is get out that fast piece, which he does, picks up the ball, and here comes the pass. No. And the scatter is interesting, I think is the best word. It's not really good, it's not really bad for either of us. It's better for Norse, that's for certain, but I can get to it, so I'm gonna try. I'm trying to make it as safe as possible to get the ghoul out. I'm gonna put down this piece and hopefully put down this piece too, but the push isn't good enough. I'm gonna have to put this piece down. And I do. Push him into the middle, and Ghoul doesn't have to dodge anymore, he can go be free, and pick up is good, let's get a pass out of the way, oh and it's successful, that was a risky play, but um, I didn't have much else in the toolbox there, and this is actually a plus 5 intercept as well, with agility 4, but um, oh that's a skull. But I took the play as my last ditch attempt to get rid of the ball, basically, and it was successful. So, Nuffle helped me out a bit there. The ball being there actually makes it very difficult for Leonard to score. He has to do. You know, he has to get to the ball first of all, if I don't manage to pick it up. And second of all, he has to pass it out again, so he has to roll a lot of dice to make it work. Uh, 
he can't anyway, so it's turn 8. So this is our last turn in the first drive. They do fail the off wear enough, but it doesn't work. And I'm going to try to get a vanity pass in. And no. Rolling a 1 is never good enough for a pass, so turnover and half time. I don't think we've had any... Oh, we have had one piece of blood. Yes, one of the horses out. So, nil-nil at half time with the runner out, which is great for me. And the elf stays out, which is also great for me. And the mummy comes back. That's perfect end of the half for me, basically. Puts me... Well, puts us on 11-11 now, but I still have a bench. And why is the beach switched again? Stupid thing. Uh, I still have a bench of one. Uh, Fallen Glory doesn't have a bench at all. <clears throat> Let's see what we can do on the return drive. Let's get the ghoul off, yeah. Let's get the ghoul off first of all. It's a blitz. That's hard. Blitz means he can set up in a way that's going to be very difficult for me to slow him down. I don't want to slow him down. It means he can set up in a way that where he can slow me down. Out is good enough for Norse all the time, of course, against a team with very little block. I need to work on getting more block on this team. That much is becoming increasingly clear. Mm. Mummy does his punching, and I have to take a one die no matter what, so I take my blitz first. It's relatively, relatively safe. It means I can two die the last two pieces. Actually, no, this is still a win. Never mind. I bring in the ghoul as support for Setek. But my guys are content just to push the Norse around for now. So let's go get the ball. Good. No need to pass here. I do like to pass, as every coach who's ever played me knows, but I don't pass when there's no point. Well, I do sometimes, but I don't often pass one, there's no point. And they just screen off pieces from the ball, so they have to use their blitz if they want to get even to the ball here. I also keep giving full and glory the chance to surf because I know that he's going to take it so it's a way of forcing him to roll dice more than anything else so even though it seems a bit silly that I pick up the pieces it's just a way of forcing him to take risks that he doesn't really have to take but he's going to take them because it's just too lucrative not to take them it gives me a little bit of breathing room to move the ball basically Finally, does something. But it's just a stun. That means I'm going to blitz with the mummy to make a gap. Yes, Fallen Glory was nice enough to leave me one. And make some space so this little ghoul can come running through. I'm probably going to stop here though. Yeah, do they have to GFI to get any further? And. Do a little handoff here, and that was a dodge that I didn't see, but 83% anyway, not a big deal. Handoff is good, making the ball as safe as possible, and spell is not good, making Sadek as 
dead as possible. Alright, let's see what he does in return. He brings in his scary piece right onto the ghoul and takes a punch, but he just gets a push, which is good for me. The ball isn't going down this turn. He should have followed here. Um, he didn't, and I know that he chose not to, but I really think he should have followed here. Yeah, and with Setek down, Yeti can come into the fray, and it's going to be very hard for him to get the ball out here. And he does get to basically take these serves for free, whereas before it would have been using pieces that wouldn't be so bad that he didn't get to use them. But I'm not in a position where I can run away very easily. The enhancement doesn't help much with the two serves. We only get a KO from it. And Berserker gets to stand right on the ghoul, making it very, very difficult for me to get the ghoul out. However, he does free up the Warrior Priest. Uh, his name is Warrior Priest. He does free up the White, meaning that I can maybe get the White into the fight. So that's maybe part of the goal. But Setek is also here to come and help out. And he will do just that by hitting this guy and pushing the Ghoul out of the way. And an injury is fantastic for me. That means that Fallen Glory is actually down a piece now. We're 11 against 10. And the two down is not good for me. That makes it very dangerous with the ball. And there goes the ball. It goes the right way at least. It's going to be hard for him to get there. Because he has to put down both pieces to get there. He pushes Skaven Thrower into a position to surf, but, and also on the diving tackle piece, though I didn't pay attention to that, to be fair, when I was watching it. And the ball goes into the hands of the Yeti. Oh no, that's bad news for me. That's really bad news for me. I'm going to struggle to put that down, but I am going to do my darndest. I even GFI the white to make sure it happens. Push isn't good enough, so I'm going to have to block Rusetic as well. And Sedek is good enough. Power is fantastic. And Stern is also fantastic. Gives me two turns to clear up the ball. Which I will do with the ghoul. And yep. Diving Tackle does what Diving Tackle does. Skaven Thrower is stunned. Though the ball is pretty secure where it is, because he has to get through all of my best pieces in order to get hold of it. And he only has one attacking roll against these three. And there goes Carcass. That's an injury that I don't really want, but it's no long term. He will be back. No regen. Necro's drunk. And a skull. Okay, that's that's very helpful, because I only have one piece to clean up. And I have two pieces that can uh, I have one piece that can potentially dodge out. Even the white can pick up the ball though. Probably who I'll use. Sedex block is good. Should bring the mummy into in, in support, but I don't think I do. I'm not even there yet anyway. Okay, we're going to take some blocks here first. Why? I don't know, but we are. Ah, to clear up this piece, I guess, actually. Skeleton can come in support. Yes, skeleton can come in support of the ball, I see. If the pickup fails, fracture can clean it up, potentially. Stand the white up as well to make sure these two can't move, and uh, the ghoul up. And the white does get the ball and runs it into relative safety. Any piece that he wants to get onto the white and actually block with, he has to double GFI. I know it didn't work against Vaxen, but in this game it's a scary choice. And he actually takes a GFI just to stand on the ball first, which is brave, but it works. 
And he moves the Berserker into a place where he can pick up the ball. He's quite confident the ball's going his way here. One GFI is good, two is good, and that's a pal. Well, and that's Warrior Priest KO'd. That's probably the worst result I could have had from that little roll. But okay, nicely done. Nicely done, Pong Glory. We get a push on the ghoul, which frees him up. Uh, the old Ferriner comes to make sure he's not going anywhere, at least not easily. Again, with diving tackle. And two down is good enough for Norse. And he does dodge out a piece to go for the ball. He fails the pickup, but the ball is in a horrible place for me. Though I am going to try my best to get to it. I do have a free mummy, which can not get there. First of all, though, let's have a backup plan. Didn't want to click the ball, click off him. Thank you. And um, we're actually going to use break tackle. Didn't need to use break tackle. Rolling a six was good enough. And we'll push the ball out, giving. Well, pushing it the wrong way, but it would have given the ghoul a chance to potentially pick it up, but the ball went in the wrong direction. Mummy says hello to Yeti. The two friends sit and have a drink. And diving tackle fails this time. My ghoul manages to get out and actually onto the ball, maybe? Fails, but it's, uh, it scatters in the wrong direction again. Though, to be honest, I'm very happy with that. It's kind of the best thing that I could have done there. So he does push the ghoul out, freeing up the ball carrier. But there isn't really a safe place to put the ball. Maybe over here. It's pretty safe. In fact, it's very safe. Yeah, this is the safe place to put the ball, of course. Now he fails the handoff, and the ball's in a horrible place as a result for both of us. So I'm going to try and dodge out and hope, at the very least, the ball goes off the pitch. You have to dodge through diving tackle again. That's... I'm hoping. And I put the ghoul into a position where, just in case, I do manage to successfully pick up the ball. He can. Dodging works, works, and then fails, and the ball does go off the pitch. That's perfect. And... It goes off the pitch again. And again. Gotta love this crowd. And again. Okay, well done, crowd. And finally, lands in probably the perfect place. Well done, crowd. Well done, indeed. What can the Norse do here? This game is getting crazier and crazier. He still has the Berserker here, ready to score. I don't know if you forgot about him or if you just left him there. I suppose he doesn't need to bring him back, so why not? Keep in mind as well, we only have a minute for each of these turns, so everything happens at breakneck pace when you're playing this game. You have to make decisions incredibly quickly. Trying for a, a blitz on the skeleton. Good enough. Saving the ball. I'm gonna have to do something insane here. And insane I will. We're gonna use this break tackle again. I take this block first though. Why? I don't know. This was completely unnecessary. I think it would need just thinking, saving some thinking time. Break tackle, 6 plus. Didn't need it, roll a 6. And <laughs> box cars, 6 plus. And an injury, ouch. Okay, that's another Norse was gone. Scatter's pretty good. And skeleton dodges out, picks up the ball, and goes for a pass. No, no, no. So close, so close, and so insane. Uh, okay, all Norse now. They have their last chance to do something crazy. Pickup is good. And we're going to try and pass it straight to the thrower who can fail the pickup, but he could have managed to hand off to the berserk. That's game over. Full and glory, as always, that was a pleasure. My man, that was fantastic. You can still see the live game.
game, it is on Fallen Glory's uh, Beam channel, so do check that out if you do want to watch the game live, where you can see us actually struggling and laughing a lot, and where we had quite a big crowd for this game, actually. It was quite a popular game. So, 14 armor breaks against 9 armor breaks. One interception. Yeah! No successful passes, even though the two of us attempted it many times. Uh, the last lineman to get injured on the last turn was the man of the match, putting up to 12, and Fracture was the man of the match, which I think is pretty fair. He played well. Putting him up to 12 as well. Uh, I'm not going to look at the statistics. So, we've got... Uh, I don't remember who's who here. I th think... These are all linemen? Really? No, one of the no, one of them is the thrower. I don't remember which, but one of them isn't lineman, I think. Or maybe an elf. I don't know. Anyway, he has three pieces that have got SPP. So one that's got the five, and then two lots of two. Somebody actually leveled up. Uh, so there was that. And <laughs> Setek got six, which is, you know, exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> so good. Okay, and Fracture got five. Alright. That's all I have for this game. Uh, that is the Blood Bowl armors out of Tinfoil, but we did also stop Fallen Glory from going up, so the returning champion isn't going to get a lot more SPP as he goes through the ranks. So that at least helps us a bit. I'm actually considering retiring the Blood Bowl armors, but um, I'll think about it before next Tinfoil season. It won't be for a while, so don't need to make that decision yet. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video, I guess. Bye for now.